Hello, it's Sarah, and I am in the craft room today, guys. I'm creating. I found these cool butterfly substrates. This is MDF board, I'm pretty sure. At the Dollar Tree, they were, there were, I think it was like a unicorn. Um, I think there was a dog. I want to go back to my Dollar Tree because this happened to be in, I was running errands and just was killing time. Actually, I took Jenny to the groomer. And I found these in a different Dollar Tree. But anyway, I'm creating a series and I only bought three because, you know, as crafters, we always buy too much stuff. So I only bought three and I already made one. I haven't grouted it yet, but I'm making a series, this three, and I'm going to include this ball chain. Remember I shared, um, I got, this is the number 10 ball chain. I got number six, but this is the bigger ball chain. And so I'm going to do a series. Um, probably going to do greens and blues on today's. I'm going to do some pinks and purples on the third one. And this is red and orange. So, um, you know, I'm using what I have. I cut myself, so I have a little cut on my finger. I hope that's okay. Um, yeah, and so I just wanted to share with you guys my process. I'm really a beginner at mosaics, and I'm just kind of... I've made them before, and I mean, there's really no learning curve to it. You just glue stuff down and grout it at the end, but I've gotten some new tools and um, I, you know, I just figured I'd take you along with me. So for today's, I'm going to work with green and blue. So I pulled out my green and blue stuff, right? And then I had some decisions to make. I like the way I did. This center was just based on this specific tile that I don't have any other color of. I only had the red. And I just figured it fit there. Let me use it. Made a black head. And then I used the little black ones cut in half to make the outline. And then I used the bead chain to kind of accent the big rounds, you know. And that was basically it. I cut some other yellow round ones in half and kind of put them and then some I have some square glitter ones to throw them in and then I filled in with this um, metallic kind of yellow and that was that. Um, today I had some decisions to make. I have these white ones that are just the same size as the black. I have these white ones that I thought could be, you know, maybe I could use them as my center. Um, I mean, thinking of it, that looks pretty cool right there, too. So, because it's a, um, they don't have to look extremely buggy. This, these little red ones, I thought, made it actually look really buggy. I mean, it's cute. It turned out how it turned out. Anyway, but I have the, these blue ones and these blue ones, and they're very similar. And so, I think what I've decided is I'm going to have these. It's going to make it so much thicker, though. So in other words, this is the difference. If I use the white, which I still may, it's just that, I don't know, I think I'm going to go for the bigger ones. And I could actually make it, see how much smaller when I have it. It's a big difference. So I'm going to take my wheel nipper and I'm going to have the blue one first. So I'm going to tr attempt to make the outline with that. And it'll work if you have the white ones. I'm gonna, I'll zoom in for you so you can see the difference. What a much finer detail that I will be able to achieve doing that. So these are the decisions that you make now. Um, I could possibly cut this into three. So, in other words, I took a smaller cut and then I'll cut this one in half. So, I'm kind of making it into a three. That might be a way to go because that way it's much thinner. I think I like this better. And I can have what I want. I can have my, <laughs> because I, I want to do this. I think I'm, I'm more drawn to this idea right now because it's different. Obviously, I just did it with the small black ones, so I want to change it up. And so what I'm going to do is go off camera, and I'm going to 
make myself a little stack of, and I just take it and I, I got, I got to do this quite a few times because what I'm going to do is make the outline all around the wings and that's pretty much it. This is kind of, I think I'm going to do this in chain. I was going to do it, it depends. I wanted to change the butterfly. I don't want it to be exactly the same. Um, I don't have a lot of options in the green and blue when it comes to, um, I have a, I ended up getting a lot of different colors of blue in the same size round. So they're, they're kind of teal, light teal, dark teal, blue, and light blue, but they're all in the same color. And then I have even a darker color, but I don't have the big, big rounds in blue at all. I only have the big rounds in green. I love this color green. Then I have this, which is a leftover from my um, sugar skull class that I took. And these are gorgeous. So I could cut these down and use them as little accent pieces. I just love the color. And then I have this in green, the same as the blue that I'm cutting up, but it's in green, the iridescent green and I have some glitter tiles in green. So I think I'm going to utilize these similar to how I did it here and um, with the green here. So yeah, I think I'm going to go off camera and I'm going to come back and start gluing with you guys. But I got to get a little stack of these going so that I have enough to outline my... Um... And you know what the other thing is? While I'm doing that, I forgot to on the other piece. I'm going to prep the surface, and what they say to do is, they being the mosaic people, um, I'm going to take this, this uh, button jar that I have, and I'm going to put a little bit of PVA, PVA, they call it, let's see, yeah, PVA glue. I'm just going to put like that much in there, and then I'm going to put about that much water as well. Did I bring my water with me? Um, and then I'm just going to mix it up and use, I'm going to base coat the, um, so I'll be back and I'll do that with you too. I'll be right back. Okay. I just went and got my water bottle and I'll just put a little bit. It's kind of like probably at least one to one. There's probably a more official measurement, but I'm just going to put that much for now and kind of let the glue dissolve in here and make myself a little, um, kind of like a Mod Podge feel, I think. And I think that's just enough to seal the piece. Um, MDF is not as porous as some other substrates might be. And this seems really watery to me, but I think it's going to be good. So I'm just going to take it with my nasty old brush and give it a coat. So we've basically just made our own sealer. I'm sure you could seal it with any sealer from, you know, on the market, any number of sealers that I have. I have, I like my Jusonia all-purpose sealer. I'm sure that would have done the job fine. But depending on what you're paint, using to mosaic, you might need a lot, and glue is really cheap. So I'm just going to do that. And if I were to put tiles along the edges, you would want to seal that too, I'm sure. Now, that being said, I didn't do it to this one. And I don't think it's going to be the end of the world. I think, I think I'm going to be fine. Weld Bond is such a strong glue. Um, for a white glue, it's so good. And I, I just put a few grid lines on this piece as well because just to make sure everything's even. I haven't been doing that. I've really been winging it when I've made my mosaics. Um, and, you know, I'm pretty good, good at eyeballing. I would say I tend to be pretty good on point, but why not put a few grid lines to just um, help you out, you know, just so you know where you're going. That was drip, dripping down the side, so I just figured I'd clean it up. And then I'll just stick my brush into water because if I were to leave it, I'm sure all the bristles would be glued together. And I'm going to set these aside to dry. Grab a... I got it on myself. And then I'm just going to put the lid on this. And it'll be able to be used again when I... Uh, while they're drying, I want to show you I also got at the Dollar Tree these um, 
sugar skulls. So it is fall and they have some new stuff at your, sh uh, this is a, sh a boy sugar skull, which I love. Now they're very, they're just almost a veneer, I would say. They're not any type of thick wood. But I thought for fun, I could whoop these up real quick and just um, do some um, wood burning on here and some painting. And they would be cute little things to have at a craft fair or something, speaking of which. So I had the boy and then the girl. She has a little rose carved in her hair. A little different. Both of them are a little different. She has some hearts there. He has more of a flourish. Um... Look, he has like a diamond on his chin. She has a heart. So I just picked those up. I was, like I say, I was killing time. Um, I did pretty good at my craft show, you guys. I had, um, just going to be cutting these while I chat. Um, it, was a, it was a nice, it was hot. It was very humid. And i um, looking for my tool. Um, I uh, shared my booth with my girlfriend. And so uh, I had probably like one a foot table and I just brought the stuff I've been working on lately so I sold a lot of my wood burned boxes I brought those um, and it was just fun and I you know I made around three 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 fifty but I kept slashing my prices and I'm you know I was talking to her about it today to see uh, what she thought of me doing that and honestly I think it's about the way we as artists, it's such a vulnerable thing to do to price your work. And, you know, because it's, I love it. I love my work. And it's, you can't put a price on that. <laughs> so it's, it's one of the hardest things I do. And I really just love chatting with the people. And, um, you know, when they love it, they love it. And they want it. And then I'm happy for them to have it in their home. So... Um, I definitely slash my prices more when I'm at a live show because I really just get caught up in, you know, them wanting to have it and, uh, it's hard. It's such a hard thing to do. So, um, you know, this journey that I'm on with my spirituality and, um, it, it all comes into play, uh, you know, valuing myself and others and, it's, it's all interesting. I, I really enjoyed it. It was a beautiful day, and I, I was exhausted <laughs> because it's my essence, you know. Being in that craft booth was, it's me. That's me in my rawest form. It was my serenity. So, um, yeah, really fun. I'm not sure that I have the energy to do it again anytime soon, but um, it was nice, and I enjoyed sharing the booth with my friend as well. So, um, yeah, I'm not sure. And, and she's already planning ones for October and stuff like that, so I think that was why I picked those uh, sugar skulls up, because I feel like I could do those, and they're a dollar, so I can sell them for a reasonable price. I don't know what that is, but... <laughs> so all I'm doing is just taking, and I'm eyeballing a third, a third, a third. And I just put the nipper... In the center of the tile let me zoom in might as well do a little detail so I put the nipper the actual blade of the um, wheel right in the center of the tile as best you can you squeeze you just hold your hand over it because that catches well is opposed to catch it and nip and then you get yourself you know and not they're not all going to be perfect size but I'll end up with a nice pile of uh, nice thin ones that I can actually use. I'm so I'm excited. I'm going to use these for the body. And you can cut any of these in half uh, pretty much with these round nippers. These, uh, So I'm going to cut a few of these too. I'm going to go off camera and cut a few of these and get a little stack. Now these are, I'm going to cut them on the diagonal. So again, I just line it up as best you can on the diagonal and I get some real perfect some are a little rounded and some are smaller than others for the most part you're good you don't it doesn't have to be perfect um, I will choose the ones I use once I get a nice stack 
So see that one's much bigger and it has a little bit of a squared edge on it as well. Um, but you don't have to uh, use the one. Like I can pick and choose which ones I use. So, but, but it is a little hard to see. See this one has a little squared edge too. So they're not perfect triangles. They're a little wonky. Come on Sarah, let's go. Probably do better off camera, right? That one's much better. All right, so I will be back. I'll have a little pile of stuff to get going with, and we can start gluing, and I'll show you the process and take you along with me. I'll be right back. All right. Um, now, remember, this grid is really just, just so I can kind of line things up and anything can change. I'm going to use, this is a little bottle that I got from David Jan Jurgensen, David Jurgensen, the one that I took the class with. The, the nozzle on the weld bond I have is so big and cumbersome and weird. It's like, this is just really nice and handy. So he sold me that when I ordered all my supplies. Um, we're going to start down the center. And you really just need um, a dot. And I'm going to put my two end ones on first. Although I, I'm pretty sure when I measured it, everything's going to fit just fine. You don't really need to press down too hard. That's what David said anyway. Um, I am one to press it really hard down to the surface, but he said you don't need to do that. So see, that isn't going to fit. Oh, there we go. So I'm going to let the tail hang off a little bit. I'm going to push this up right to the edge. And I'm just staying in the in the center. So it's not really a realistic looking butterfly body, but it's just going to give the impression, right? Oops. Good. Now I can attach my outline. And for this I'm going to use just a, let's see, I think I'm going to do a bead and I'm just going to go right along the edge. You know, maybe three inches worth at first. And the first one, oh, I think it's going to be fine. I'm going to notch it right into his shoulder there. And I also have a Q-tip. I'm going to come in so you can see. I also use a Q-tip just to clean up the glue. I am a heavy hand, and that is this, it, it is with glue as well. I definitely um, tend to put down a lot of glue. And then I'm just going to butt it up against the edge and create an outline. They're not going to be exactly the same uh, width, but I'm okay with that. I'll try to keep them, you know, close. Some of them have a smooth edge because depending on where they were cut from on the tile, so I'll have smooth edges like this, and then you'll have the center piece that doesn't have a smooth edge. So I'm, I'm mixing it up. I don't mind. As long as I make sure that the shiny side, oops, the shiny side faces up. And I'm just going to pick it up and make sure that it's kind of butt up against the edge. See, this one isn't. It slid back. I think that's why I tend to give it a little push and get that suction going because I don't want it slipping around on me. This one's a little um, pointing in the wrong direction. So I bring, I have these tools that I think I got at Hobby Lobby, I'm not sure. Um, and I use them to move, and or I use my finger and then I get a cut. So. Just make sure you do it carefully. And I'm going to do that. Um, this I think I'm going to leave for later, but I'm going to do it here. And I could make an angle. Yeah, I think I'm going to cut off this corner. Make a little angle there so that it kind of fits better. It's not necessary. I don't think, you know, it would de 
detract from the design that much if I didn't do that. But I kind of like it. I'm just trying to find a thinner one because this is thin. And just move, keep moving along that. You can kind of turn them. I don't mind there being a little gap in between those that goes like this, like a V-gap. As long as it's not too big. If Once it gets a little too big, then I'll start nipping the edges to make it fit like that. But I'm just going to point it around this curve here. Keeping it butt up against the edge of the piece. And um, I'll tell you about the tools in a minute, but the thing is, I'm no expert. So see, in this case, we're about to make a hard turn. So I think I'm going to cut this. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to hold the piece of glass, and I'm going to cut because I can tell I need to cut off the edge. So I'm just going to take it and do my best to make a little... So see, I made a little um, angle there on the edge of it. And then I'll be able to go around this corner. Because I like that little, that little extra shape there. So I'm going to just put it there to kind of make a turn. I think I'm going to need to do it on the, the next couple as well. Um, so let's see, because I'm making a turn. So I'm going to just do the same thing. I'm sure you could do it on both ends, but I'm going to just keep doing it on one. That's how I did it on the other one, and it seemed to work out just fine. So now this next piece, I'm going to do this, nip that corner. And I'm going to let it kind of hang, or let's see. It's not quite long enough, but I think I'm going to go with, like, butt one right up against it. Nope, I'm still going to have to, let's see. Cut this corner off. And you don't need to do that. I mean, it's it's fine if you just butt them up against each other and there's little gaps in between because the grout will fill it in and it'll still look good like a butterfly. Um, you know, I've just been... The other person I watch quite a bit is uh, Kim from Mosaics Australia. She has a YouTube channel and so she does that quite a bit. She angles her tiles oops, in such a way that they uh, join up nice, you know, but it's not, it's, it's personal preference, and it's, it's just a cute little butterfly. This is not a masterpiece that I, you know, that's going to go in a museum or anything. <laughs> I'm going to trim this one, though, because it's, we're going around a curve again. I love, love, love looking at, see that didn't, I don't like that left a gap anyway, um, Mosaic's um, Mentoring. I think it's Mosaic Mentoring. I got to pull the camera a little closer. Um, on Facebook is a great forum to see other people's work and there's all levels of, of you know, of Mosaic's on there and it's just so awesome. I I could look at it all day. I love, love, love looking at. Um, I'm gonna. I'm just gonna get a, a wiper because I get glue all over me. Um, yeah, I can spend hours. That's why I don't have um, Instagram. I don't have all of the uh, formats of social media because I would just spend too much time looking. And I have Pinterest. That was the first thing I used for um, inspiration. Um, but having that community at your fingertips just makes you feel like, wow, I can do that. Look, they're doing it. I can do it. So see, this is what it's starting to look like. 
So basically it's just a lot more of this. Um, let's see. I am going to trim this one. And put it there. And then I probably could... Uh, change that a little bit to make them fit better um, so instead of using this one I think I'm going to take these two off and use two bigger ones I think it'll fit better I'm um, going to go away and come back when I have all of the outline done and then we'll start planning the next steps so um, I'll be back and I think I think the next tile is going to fit much better. I think I'll be able to uh, might as well finish this with you, and then I'll be back when the rest is done. I'm going to no, I think it's going to fit. I'm just not going to trim it. So in other words, I didn't trim. So that's what it looks like. Let me come up. I just love that shimmer so I'm gonna do that all the way around and I'll be back and we'll see where what the next steps gonna be all right so I finished that and what I've been doing is auditioning all the other tiles that I have so because this isn't like a planned out thing where I bought the tile specifically for it it's a design whatever I'm winging it and I had this line drawn here and I liked the idea of me I was either going to use this to divide that out but now I'm thinking I have this uh, lime iridescent lime I think I'm going to fill that space just like I did here by cutting the tiles little by little so I started in this corner and I just started because it's as tall as that line but now I need to cut off this corner so I'm just going to snip a little off this tile little by little and get it to fit snugly these tiles are pretty chubby so I, I like that let me go a little rounder on the bottom So I can really stick it, I like that, I like the curve that it's taking, then I mean I, actually I'm going to trim it a little more so it'll sit up against that, I kind of like that, it's a little gappy, no I'm going to leave it, alright then this one. I want it to follow that line so each one's going to get a little shorter this only needs a little tiny bit of this corner cut off I crunch too much and then the next one And I'm gonna, I could even use a marker to kind of draw it, but I'm just using, I'm just eyeballing it and seeing if I can wing it. These are chubby little tiles. See if this one fits there better. I mean it's not as straight as I would like but this is really just playing and seeing what happens now I had this little piece left from the other side I like it but I don't think it's exactly did I have anything else I have this little corner piece um, I think I want to make it a little so I'm gonna cut this in like half almost like I'm just gonna take off a third of it 
I'm going to see if that's the right size. Yeah, and I'm going to take off a little on this corner. Just get it to fit in there. And keep that. Now this, hmm, I'm going to try and look at it in the mirror. Because, I mean, not the mirror, the camera. This seems a little higher than it is here. I can tell right now these are definitely taller than one, two, three. This one and this one are not the same size. But I think I can make up for it. It's okay. I'm going to see if. Maybe I should use this one. It'll bring it down. I think I'll do I'll use this one too. I'll see. I mean I can always switch it back. I think that looks more even. And then I need I think I have a couple of little slivers from the other um, side that I did. Try and use the tiles that I've already cut. <clears throat> I'm going to need two more, so let me grab another um, <clears throat> full tile. I'm going to go with. I think that looks good and then I'll just use a piece of this to finish it off. This is so like thin. I to use my tools. bumping into the glue I think like the dried glue that's on the um, substrate but I think I'm gonna go with that I'm gonna glue them in I mean this one just see there's there's a piece of the tile right here I'm gonna try and cut that off see it didn't come off that side I keep notching off the other side Alright, maybe that's better. I can always cut another one. I think I did it. I think I'm I think I'm gonna roll with it. I think that's a good idea. Now these are the only big circles that I have. All the other circles I have, I found this other bag of like assorted things and I have actually you know what do I have I forgot I had this other bag of assorted um because I could just you know see if I want to use blue instead of green that might be cool because I do I have a couple of blue in here I like this color blue See, so I have so many different colors of blue. It's going to take me a minute to decide. So first let me go ahead and glue in. And then I got to use some of that ball chain. So what I was thinking of doing is running the chain along this and outlining this whole thing. So I want to, um, I'm making like a series of butterflies here. Um, but I don't want them to be the same. You know me. I never want it to be the same twice. Of course, when I start gluing, it's looking like I'm going to need more tiles or something.
I'm going to use my tools. Otherwise, I will cut myself like I did yesterday. These are very sharp, so I like having, and I think I was going to tell you guys about the tools. So I am a very beginner. Um, I've only had access, I, I mean, I've ordered tiles online, but the tools, I got this at Home Depot. This is my wheel nipper, and I'm pretty sure I got these in a set at maybe even Michael's. I'm pretty sure. I had two tweezers, this thing, and one other tool. I forget. Um, and I'm sure <clears throat> you could use toothpicks, a, 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 a meat skewer, all types of stuff. You don't have to have the fancy schmancy stuff, but uh, if it was there, you know, you know how we crafters are. You gotta get it if you think, you know, but you don't need it, as all I'm saying. What you do need is glue, some tiles, your imagination, and the will. And you will be able to make things. This one's a little wonky looking, the way I cut it. I'm not in love with it, but you know what? It's done. That's what I'm loving about it. Hopefully this little guy will fit in there now that I've... I'm going to have to snug him in there. Maybe I... Yeah, I don't think I have enough room now. Um... Good enough. Okay, so we'll get back to the circles because I have to audition stuff. I can't just wing it. I, I want to make sure. Anyway, so this is the 10 inch, I'm not, not 10 inch, number 10 ball chain that I used on the other um, one. And I was thinking I would just run it along. And it's heavy, so it moves. It's, it's hard to just place it in here without it trying to leave and do its own thing. I think I like that. On the other one, I wrapped it around and down. Like I kind of made it into a little, and then I only put it around the center. That kind of looks like a flower. Look, a flower with little petals right there. Anyway. Um, but for this one, I'm, tr I'm changing it up, and I think this is what I want to do. And that's the thing. If I haven't explored other things, and then, I mean, I can always pull it up. This really won't be set set for a while. So I can glue it down, and then if I really hate it, I can still change it. And then I was thinking I could put the circle there and maybe play around with even some smaller ones because I have that. Now on, what would I do on the bottom? Would I do a similar just outline it again? So that's going to take me a minute to figure out. So I'll be back when I figure it out <laughs> and we'll do it. Alright, I made a decision. The ball chain is just going to go here. It's going to end there. So I'm going to use a, this is, I think, I forget what they call it, but it's just like a, a, a cutter. It might be a chain cutter or a, something like that. And I'm just going to take it to there. And then I'm going to do the same thing over here. This one fits in there really well, but this doesn't fit here. Hi, hi, Jenny. Jenny just came and put her nose on my leg. My doggie. Well, it's James's dog, really. All right, I'm going to glue those in. This is one nice thing about the number 10 ball chain. These green tiles, I mean, you can't see them in uh, 3D. I'll show you. I'll try to show you. But they're much thicker than the other um, tiles. So let me see. Do I want to... 
pry this in here. Um, just going to lay it in for now. I'll show you. Hold on, let me get this glued. I like to use a decent bead of glue for this because I don't know how well that's going to stay. Okay, so I'm going to show you. This is the green tiles that are um, down here compared to one of the glitter tiles. Oh yeah, you can see that. It's much thicker than the ball chain. This is the number 10 again. It's definitely as thick as the small, oops, sorry. So in other words, it stands up next to it. This one's going to get buried in the grout a little bit next to that big bead of the big tile. So like this little green tile, these are about the same width as a number 10. Although when I did my other pieces with the number 6 chain, it worked just fine. But these should stick up a little higher. Alright, so now I want to put ball chain on the bottom as well. Because I like to tie it in. And I don't know where I want to put the... And I, and I did make the choice, I decided to come up. I did decide to go with green, and then I'm going to fill everything else in with blue, I think. Ugh, that's not true. Because I still have all of these green. So if I do a blue dot, and do the rest green, that might be better. I think I'm, I might do that. Oh boy, it's so hard to make these decisions. Because um, on my other one, I had the, I just cut some of those sparkle, gl the glitter tiles in half and put them as an accent. And I like that. Um, what else? See, I could do stuff next to the body. But I really just want to figure out where to put the ball chain at the moment. Um... On the bottom of the other one, I just put a ring around each of those. That could be good, but then if you, then I might need to put a ring around these too. I think that could be good. Um, or I could run this chain along the whole top and do it do the little wrap around thing like I did on the other one. It could be more in the center. Maybe I come from the center and then come up and do the wrap around. That looks kind of cool. So this is all personal preference, design, and um, yeah. So I'm going to figure all this out and I'll come back when I know exactly what I'm doing and let you know. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, I'm going to end because I have to go cook dinner and this is the hardest part for me. It's really making these decisions. And I haven't glued any of this. Uh, I'm liking the diagonal sparklers. I'm liking that. Still haven't figured out where I'm putting the ball chain on the bottom. Kind of, I kind of like this. I found these other, um, this little bag of like the same type of bead. So I'm playing around with that. Then I'm thinking it's not close enough in color to this. So it looks, I don't know. Um, I sort of kind of wish I'd done this all in green, but then I can always probably make these green because that's supposed to be blue. So I can't make the decisions on the spot like this on the fly. I have to audition things. So like, see, you, I could put this here and then go out this way. Um, the same here. I could, you know, pull it down further or do that. It totally changed it, right? Um, I could put the big one down here and go this way, the same as that. That could be kind of cool. So say I did this. It kind of feels the same over there, except the big one's down here. I could even change it. Maybe I'll put the big one to keep it the same. I don't like that as much. So, there's a lot of decisions to make. Then, I could just leave it in the middle. 
without these little guys. Um, I could put it really focus it in the center and I could make a little petals around that in the in the blue. Um, I have a lot of deciding to do and I got to cook dinner so <laughs> I could pull this down a little and go I kind of like these the dot thing since I have the graduation in size if it feels like I want to use that um, design element and I could go up this way so have it kind of going toward the center so they're all doing that I, that's actually appealing to me right now make sure it's all centered that kind of looks cool that I think I like that but still I have to figure out if I am gonna put any ball chain down here do I now that I've put it here do I need it there but it's because it's um it's gonna be like a set uh, kind of thing where I'm using the ball chain I don't have to but I am um, I'm still calling it you guys but I'm thinking this is what it's gonna end up being like so I hope you enjoyed that I hope you got a little taste for the process and you know you can do it have fun thanks for watching